Hey, what's up? I'm Rilla Bastone here. So today we're drawing some more faces, uh, trying to find inspiration and trying to learn from another artist and to uh, to study their style. And today that artist is Joe Mad, Joe Madurera. So if you're not familiar with him, he's done a bunch of stuff for uh, Marvel, but he's probably most well known for the comics and the the, uh, the games that are based on his own properties like uh, Battle Chasers and Darksiders. And before we get into his style in more details, let's talk about why I picked him specifically. So the the first two artists that we covered in these videos were Katsuhiro Otomo and Mike Mignola. And I kind of wanted to keep that thing where the um, like where we alternate between Western comics and manga, uh, because they're very different, and I think that they have very complementary strengths. Like stylistically, I think someone who who would be able to pull things from both, uh, that would be a huge advantage. And I started thinking, like, is there actually an artist that I like that has done that, uh, that has sort of merged a lot of the, uh, like, the Western and Eastern stuff in their art? And I think Joe Mad has done that to, to some extent. Uh, like, the, uh, the dominant uh, sort of archetype that defines his, his style is still mostly, like, the Western superhero comic style, but the, uh, the, the manga influences are so strong, um, and probably even getting stronger, I think, like as time goes by with his more uh, more recent stuff, like those influences are so strong that it, it's the closest to uh, to a perfect mix of both, I think. And I actually read his stuff only pretty recently. Like it's not like I'm a uh, I'm a long time like lifelong fan or anything. Like when uh, when Battle Chasers was coming out in the '90s, like at that point in my life, I was still living in France. I wasn't reading much uh, American comics. Uh, other than Spawn, maybe, like, that was pretty much it. So I came to his stuff very late, but reading through his works now, like, sort of, uh, like, backwards, chronologically, uh, going back in time, like, I never realized what a huge influence his style had on uh, on American comics. Like, sometimes when, when you're um, when you're really familiar with the, the style of an artist, like a very influential artist, you can sort of pick out the little stylistic like moves, like the little style gimmicks that they have and that they have passed on to other artists uh, through their influence. Like it's almost like you can, um, like you can trace the uh, the stylistic DNA of, of great artists through other people that they have influenced. And reading older Joe Mad stuff, like going back through that whole like sort of lineage in time, it's like constantly I could see little things in his art and I would think like, oh, I've seen a lot of people do this before. Like I've seen my recent favorite artists do this. So this is where it comes from. Like uh, I realized that his um, his stylistic DNA, I guess you could say, like it's all over the place in, in today's comics. Like he clearly created a whole generation of, uh, of little Joe Mads. And it's interesting to realize that because it's just a, um, like it's a time period in American comics that, that I missed for the most part. And um, yeah, I thought for those reasons he would be interesting to, to study. And let me just say, like with these faces here, I, I don't think I even come close to, um, to, to emulating his style. And I think the reason why this was so difficult is because his lines, like his line art, it, it's not just lines. Like it's penciled in a way where the, the lines also include a lot of actual shading in the faces. Like the first thing that you notice about his faces is how well defined the, the, the planes of the face are. Like it's very angular, it's very uh, like aggressive lines almost. Like there is this type of, uh, of male face that he does that... I think he's well known for like the, that's almost iconic the uh, the garrison face from uh, from battle chasers with that sort of typical 90s superhero look like the um, the very exaggerated square jawline like the, the thick neck the the heavy brow line the um like the deep angular cheekbones and like all of those lines they define these angular planes of the face so precisely but he does often also shade those planes, like he's like filling them in, like penciling them in, or like hatching some uh, some shadows into them with, with some like super fine hatching. And I feel like a lot of that is very difficult to do without a uh, like a pencil, like the super fine control of a pencil. Um, like uh, at least I cannot do that with the way that I do lines. So that is mostly like completely missing from my faces here. And I did try to hatch some stuff here and there, but it just comes off as like really rough compared to uh, to how smoothly he does it. Um, another thing that really goes against how I usually draw is the way he does hair. And I guess um, 
like I don't know if you would consider hair as part of the face, but uh, I feel like his way of doing hair has also been so influential and it's like so recognizable that I just had to uh, to at least try. So when I was talking about the uh, the manga influences, the the hair is probably one of those. Uh, one of the bigger ones like it feels like he took the idea of the like the manga hair with like the big chunks of kind of spiky hair instead of drawing like detailed individual uh, strands of hair but he made it a lot less stiff like when you when you imagine like the cliche manga hair it's like big stiff spikes that don't move and here instead of doing that like it's still like the big chunks like the spiky chunks but they have so much like energy and flow to them like when he draws long hair, it almost looks uh, like liquid uh, with all those uh, like lines flowing through it. So I, I tried to um, to break down my usual flat hair shapes into into those chunks, like curvy sort of flowing chunks. It's also pretty crazy how different his male and female faces are. Like it's almost like um, it really feels like two completely different styles. Um, I feel like his female faces are are much more traditionally Western. Um, at least in his um, his Marvel stuff, like in his own books, he does push that sort of manga look further on females. But like still, the the, the contrast between the uh, like the angular aggressive shapes of the male faces, like the the level of detail of, of the male faces and the shading in them, and then the super smooth uh, female faces that, that he draws, like you, you never really realize how strong that contrast is before you you try to draw it yourself. When it comes to uh, to facial features, I actually think that studying his faces would be a great way to uh, to learn how to draw like noses and lips and stuff. Because everything is just so well defined, like really sharply defined, like a, um, a a nose in real life, for example, it's it's just this weird curvy, like lumpy thing, like it's just a, a fleshy thing that's kind of fused into the face somehow. There's no like super defined edges or anything. But when you look at Joe Mad's noses, for example, you can see exactly where like the edges of the bridge of the nose are and like the edges of the nostrils or like the planes of the lips like it, it's all so clearly and sharply defined and like it's not like it's simplified or it's not like it's easy to draw but it's stylized in a way that makes it kind of easy to understand what kind of 3d shapes make the uh, makes make the nose or make the lips um like there are no weird lumpy shapes like that's what i'm trying to say like it's all precisely cut like hard edged shapes and i feel like those would just be like generally speaking easier to learn from like if you were learning how to draw facial features but um uh, yeah that's my thoughts on joe mad and my uh my attempt to learn something from his style uh, let me know what you think and as always if you want to see more of my art all the links are in the description below artstation instagram twitter and so on uh, as well as our discord server if you want to join us there and uh, yeah that's it thanks for watching if you would like to support this channel and help me make more videos check out this patreon link on screen right now or in the description below where you can get all of my psd files as well as real-time versions of all my videos